The last three years of war have shown no mercy to either side. The bitter fighting continues across Europe over land, sea, and air, leaving behind mountains of casualties and many more broken souls. The United States till now had remained neutral, but the mounting economic pressure and the return of Germany to unrestricted submarine warfare finally awakes the sleeping giant. On April 6, 1917, the United States declares war on Germany. Within months of the declaration, the U.S. Army launched the first universal draft. And despite enduring segregation in their own country, over 360,000 African Americans enlist, eager to show their patriotism in hopes of returning home as heroes. James is one of these men. Dear Brother James, I hope this letter finds you well and that working at the docks is not too backbreaking. It's good to receive news from you and from home. Keeps my mind off of the war. We wallow in the trenches, in the mud among the rats and the dead bodies, afraid that if we stand tall, we might catch a bullet. But if you take anything from my letter, I want it to be this. Do whatever you can to stay away from this madness. You followed me everywhere when we were kids. But please, don't follow me here, James. There is nothing here but misery and death. Be safe and stay home. Freddy. Jeff Ferry, no! <laughs> No. Freddy, it's good to hear from you. Sorry to disappoint, but it looks like I'm following you around again. I've already enlisted with the 15th New York National Guard Regiment, or the old 15th, as they call us. We're done with our training and on our way to the front. We'll sail from New York to France. We're on our way to help you win the war. But don't you worry about me. I can take care of myself just fine. Your little brother. 
and James. April 9th, 1917, Vimy Ridge. This geographic stronghold held by the Germans since the early days of the war remained impenetrable. In the latest attempt to break through the German defenses, ground forces were ordered to team up with the British Royal Flying Corps. Before launching the attack, the soldiers were given a moment to write to their loved ones. Aim. Interrupted by George's unconventional landing, Freddy soon learned that his unit was going to take part in the operation and be paired up with the peculiar British pilot, now grounded and without a plane to fly. Ten hut! Oh! Ready? Upset. Archie.
Despite his haphazard flying, George managed to pinpoint the enemy's location. He relayed the information to Freddy, who then launched the strike on the enemy cannons. But despite the triumph of reclaiming Vimy Ridge after three long years, their victory was marred by the dead bodies strewn across the hillside. While Europe was torn apart by war, the U.S. had begun a massive mobilization in what many believed could permanently change the tide of the war. Aboard the USS Pocahontas was a racially segregated unit, the Old 15th, made up almost entirely of African-American soldiers. These men were sailing to Europe, ready to put their lives on the line 
to prove their love for a country that didn't always love them back. Dear Freddy, we're on our way to France. This is our first night at sea, but don't worry, me and the boys are ready. Speaking of the fellas, I lucked out and I'm getting on good with a fine bunch of them. There's Fidgety Lang Edwards, who never puts down his drumsticks. Jack Harris, our medic from Chicago. Hey. Joey Brass is from Harlem and plays a mean banjo. And Chef Caldwell is always cooking up stuff for us. We just have to make sure to get served before B.B. Johnson. <laughs> Great guy, but he can really put it away. Well, I gotta go now. Practice is about to start, and there's no jazz band without a clarinet. <laughs> Stay safe. We'll see each other soon. Your brother, James. the Pocahontas continued to cross the Atlantic, their encounter with the German U-boat 155 brought them ever closer to the fight. Entering the battlegrounds of the war, their ship was spotted by Ernst. May 31st, 1916. On land, the conflict was bogged down in trench warfare. Neither the Allies nor the Central Powers were able to make significant gains. At sea, Allied forces dominated Germany with a crippling blockade. Determined to stay away from the war, Ernst escaped to the solitude offered by the depths of the sea. It was here below the surface that he scavenged, hoping to eke out a living.
As his boat settled on the seabed, Ernst began to come to terms with the war's inevitable, all-consuming power. Defeated and alone, he could feel the Jutland water's cold embrace tightening around him. Stranded for hours in the aftermath of the Battle of Jutland, Ernst was starting to feel his grip slip away. But when the merchant sailors aboard the submarine, the Germania, came to his aid, they not only saved Ernst's life, they also took him in as one of their own. In them, Ernst found kindred spirits and instantly felt right at home. But even at home, you have to carry your weight. Schnapps and Bams? Schubba. Klerk gebraust.
dog stuff. In 1916, the U.S. had remained neutral, allowing for business as usual. Despite trade blockades, the few merchant submersibles in existence, like the Germania, were still able to trade with them. Working the Baltimore docks at the time was surprised to see the submarine fall into port. Fighter. Hey. Huh? No! <sighs> <sighs>
All us clank. Musica. Yes. The Germania's voyage was a commercial success, and her crew returned eager for their next trade. But their triumphant return was interrupted by the German Imperial Navy. As the sole German national aboard, Ernst was conscripted to fight. The submarine, too. By decree of the Kaiser, the Germania was henceforth ordered to hunt convoys in the Atlantic. Ernst was faced with a grim choice. Yes. Torpedo the Pocahontas and kill his friend, or disobey a superior's direct order and risk being put to death. He had chosen to save his friend, but knew it would only be a matter of time before he was ordered to kill again.